Well, you know, Good Time started in the 70s, 75 we started on the air. And so at that time, being that we were the first black African family show ever on television, I was the first black female teenager ever on television, it was like we had great writers, but they were mostly white. And um, we had to help them to write for us. They were great writers, wonderful writers. They could write a show in a minute, but they were looking for us to help them with the lingo and what we would do and what we wouldn't do. So we had to do that to make the show what it was, you know. Well, because the show always dealt with different issues, as did all of Norman Lear's shows, but especially being that this is the black show, the American black show, um, we came across a lot of different issues. Uh, there were a lot of people who didn't like the show because it was too much, like I would say, they thought J.J. was acting too buffoonish or whatever. But we had Esther Roll, and she, I loved her. I mean, very, very much. It was like my second mom. <laughs> but um, she made sure that we kept the show in line. In other words, when anyone was going over the barrel or over the top, she would bring us back. So if JJ was going a little bit too wild, she would say, I don't want that. You know, let's keep it straight. You know, he could be funny, but not a fool. And he, she made sure of that. So I give uh, her a lot of credit for the way the show was and that it's still a success. Well, you know, at the time it was a groundbreaking show. Uh, the world was really ready for something like that, especially the African Americans. We had never seen anything like that before. Um, our people on television, a dad, a mom, kids, you know, whole thing, neighbor, whole nine. Um, so it was, a, it was a big deal. And we taught a lot. Our show taught a lot of lessons. Um, and even to this day, I hear people come up to me and say, oh my goodness, it taught a lot of lessons. I watched it, my mom watched it, my kids are watching it. So it's like a legacy that's going down. And I, I think it's fantastic. The fact that um, we were in the ghetto and we made it and we stayed together and we had morals and ethics um, against the odds, you know, it made the show loved by so many people, not just African Americans, but all people who were struggling and still are struggling. Good Times did pave the way because it was a show that let people know that you can make it. You know, you if you want to make it, you can make it. And um, like the Thelma character, you know, she was a positive character uh, among the odds, you know. Like my real father always told us growing up, what's around you does not have to be in you. And I carried that with me all the time. And I did, as a youngster, I did on good times. And I tried to bring that to that character, that she could still be educated, a good girl with morals, trying to be the best she can be. You know, it doesn't matter what's around her. A lot of Thelma is me, because I was that girl in the ghetto, you know, trying to make it, taking dance classes, trying to stay in school, you know, not fooling around. I grew up in Brooklyn, in Brownsville, in the projects. The way I was raised, and in my neighborhood, there were a lot of, um, a lot of drugs, a lot of things like that, a lot of things going on. And um, I stayed focused. I grew up around it, so I wasn't surprised about it. So when I went to Hollywood and all that stuff was going on, it didn't phase me because I was used to it. I know how to focus around that stuff. So it, it didn't excite me. I didn't feel like I was in the in crowd, the out crowd, nothing. I was Bernadette, you know, and I stayed focused. Well, my dad was an activist in the community, uh, yes, and, and you know, he was like a manager in a store. I won't name the store, but you know, that's what he did. But he was basically an activist. He was a musician. He played the saxophone. He did a lot of different gigs and things like that. And he was determined to make sure his children were educated. That was very much part of his whole, his whole thing. And uh, being an activist, he made sure that the right thing stayed right and that he fought for people to have their rights. We went to Catholic school and uh, my brother and I, both my brothers and I, and uh, I think I was in the second grade or the third grade. I was in the third grade. My brother was in the kindergarten, something like that, first grade. Um, and we had two friends. Um, I won't say their names, but they were Italian. And I loved 
my girlfriend and um, my brother loved his friend, which was her brother. And we were the best friends in school. So one day, um, she lived like right across the street. And one day she said, come on over for lunch. So we went over for lunch. And while we were there, her dad came in and she, I could see like all the color drained out of her face and we didn't know what was going on. And she said, come on, we have to leave, we have to leave. He didn't want us in his house. And that's when I really, I, I couldn't believe it because they were so sweet, nice. I couldn't believe she had parents like that. And that hurt me so bad, I never forgot it. And another incident when I was really young, uh, I was about five and they were, um, she was Japanese and her husband was black. And most in my neighborhood, and my building was all blacks, but it was a Japanese lady and, and her husband was black and she had three beautiful, you know, Japanese black children with long, beautiful hair, beautiful girls. And we were in the elevator, I'll never forget this. And my mom was there and her mom was there. And another little girlfriend came from another neighborhood and she was visiting and she was biracial. And so she was half very light and with long, pretty, and I was me, you know. And so we were all, in the elevator and the one girl said to the other girl, her name was Bubbles, she said, Bubbles, I would like for you to come over for lunch. So she was invited to lunch and I was standing there and I said, well, I want to come. Can I come? And my mother tapped me and I said, no, can I come? And my mother tapped me and when we got off the elevator, I said, mommy, I want to go. She said, they don't want you to go. She had to tell me. She said, baby, they don't want you to go. I said, why, mommy? I said, because I don't have long hair and I'm not light-skinned. That was a reality check I'll never forget.